first of all, we all have seven seconds to make a first impression and probably four of those are nonverbal. Mm. So when I show up in the room, I generally change the conversation, no matter what the conversation is, to basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I wear my gray beard so I can limit some of that so I can show <laughs> some, some seasoning. Yep. Um, but the reality is that's a, there are very few athletes who transition well from a career in athletics to service of any kind. So, so you can almost name on, you know, on two hands people who've gone from either a long-term career in, in, in sports to, to, um, to business. There's even a small, I think it's like five of us who've ever gone from uh, professional sports to elected office, wow. right? So when I first left sports, I, I wanted to get a real job and every single interview devolved into uh, my participation in the Final Four <laughs> or, or some story about people I had played with and I wouldn't even get the job. So I'd share terrific <laughs> stories that they would share probably later over dinner and it wouldn't always garner me the ability. So I had to really readjust myself and refocus and go back to school so that I could be skilled in the career that I said I wanted to work in, which was public service. I had to go back and get a master's degree, currently working on a PhD. Um, but part of that was the psychological challenges of reinventing myself. And, and I had to also learn that I have to do things for myself and because I want them, not because I want to prove to the world. Because a lot of this was about proving to the world that I'm not a dumb job. Mm. Yeah, right. Because now it's like, you know, I've known you for like decades now, right? And I know the intellectual capacity that you have. Brilliant. I mean, whenever Rob speaks, you got to take down notes, right? You know? And um, what's the, I guess, like, what's the frustration with that though? Whereas you know, people don't see that or they always kind of lean towards sports. And then they're like, wait, like you like are what, like teaching at MIT or, you know, you're doing no, I to teach at MIT. Right. So you that, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So now it's like, you know, it's those. So like. So, so the best analogy I could give is when you've seen a really, really exquisite or beautiful woman and you relegate her to her beauty. And she can be a, a nuclear physicist, mm. but that has less relevance to you because you've relegated to her, relegated her to how she look and your perception. That's what I've lived my entire life under. And I'm not saying what was me, I ain't crying. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that that is a, a, a hard pill to swallow when you go in rooms. And listen, people have said things to me that are you know kind of wildly inappropriate, like almost like, wow, I didn't know you could even speak. Like <laughs> people are like, Wow, really? Like that thought came from your your mind. So when you get enough of that and those challenges arise, it becomes incredibly difficult to or or you think it's difficult to convey a thought and idea. I, I recently just said to someone, um, because I had spoken to them uh, uh via uh, uh, uh social media around some themes and policies. And then when they saw me, you could tell they, they kind of turned their head to the side, you know, like, like, your, like your puppy does when he looks at you curiously. And I knew exactly what was happening to them. They were thinking, that can't be the dude mm. that we shared this discourse with because I just don't look that, like that. So there's partly, you know, my height and then, then there's my hair, mm. right? So if you're in a perception of, first of all, first of all, and then I'm black, yeah. right? So this, this particular person was not black. And we had shared this discourse and it was deep and philosophical and insightful and profound. And then you see me and your perception doesn't allow you to accept the fact that that could come from me. And in the span of seven seconds, I could see that that was what the person was, was, was wrestling with. And I, I felt the need to like kind of relieve them of that, right? Which I shouldn't have. I should have let them sit in their uncomfortability, <laughs> quite frankly. But- my first, you know, my, 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 I felt compelled to like relieve them of, of this juxtaposition that they found themselves in because I could actually articulate myself and I had some level of acumen in the course of study that we were talking about. That's, that's more consistent. But now since I've been in the public eye, uh, people like yourself and other people go, oh no, that's consistent with who we know. But for the, for the first interaction with me, for most people, it's, it's, it's very confusing. 